Neither should your periods and other punctuation marks cut through the paper like this. On the electromatic, the type bars are operated electrically. First, you start the motor by pushing this switch. Then strike the space bar several times to see if your motor is running. If there is no carriage movement, you'd better check the electrical connection. The motor turns this power roll. which operates the type by turning these cams. All type impressions are mechanically made uniform, regardless of how hard you strike the keys. A light touch on the keys is all you need. Be sure to shut off the motor when you stop typing for any length of time. Most people do their space bar stroking with the right thumb. Left-handed people may use their left thumb. However, do all your spacing with one thumb. Hold your thumb naturally, not here, but here, and stroke the space bar with the lower side of your thumb. When the shift key is depressed, your typewriter prints capital letters and the special characters above the number and punctuation keys. When using the shift key with the left hand, keep your F finger on the home key. When your right hand is used, keep your J finger on the home key so that your guide positions are not lost. First, shift evenly in three counts. Shift key down, key stroke, shift key up. Later, with experience, you can speed up the action this way. Remember to start this way. One, two, three. One, two, three. If the shift key is not pressed all the way down on manual machines, Floating capitals will result. Avoid these incomplete strokes and poor timing of your three count shift motion, and floating capitals will be eliminated. To write a number of capital letters in succession, press down the shift lock key. This shifts the type in some machines and raises the carriage in others and locks it so that only capital letters and uppercase characters will be written. To release the lock, press down either shift operated by the motor. requires only a light touch on the shift key. On the burrows, the operation is identical. To bath space, use your little finger on this, like this, for additional back spaces. Frequent use of the backspace key for striking over lightly struck letters takes poor stroking form and wastes time. And don't backspace strike over incorrectly struck letters. Those are errors which you should not have made, and if made, should be erased neatly. On the electromatic, the space key is operated electrically and requires only a light touch. The tabulator key is operated with the little finger of your right hand. Without taking your eyes from the copy, the key is held down until the carriage reaches the set position. On machines equipped with bar tabulators, Indent by stroking the tabulator bar with the first finger of your right hand. On the electromatic, 
The tabulator key is on the left. It is only necessary to touch the tabulator key. You need not hold it down until the carriage stops. The carriage return lever is usually at the left. This lever returns the carriage and at the same time operates the line space mechanism so that the paper is set for a new line. On manually operated machines, learn to return the carriage with a quick circular movement of your left hand, avoiding unnecessary effort and lost motion. Learn to judge how hard to hit the carriage return lever so that the carriage returns the whole way without banging against the margin stop. That was not hard enough. That was too hard. That was better. Your hand should drop from the lever when it is about in line with the left frame of the machine and should be back on the keys when the carriage reaches the right stop. Now watch this in slow motion. For additional line spaces, after the carriage has returned, strike the carriage return lever as often as required. On the electromatic machine, the carriage is returned by touching this key with the little finger of your right hand. The burrows works in the same manner. As the carriage returns, the paper is automatically advanced for the next line. If additional line spaces are required on the burrows or the electromatic, Touch the carriage return key lightly, as many times as necessary. Now let's see about paper insertion. This is the paper table. This is the paper guide. This is the paper bale. And this is the platen. The paper guide can be moved to any point on the paper table. Its position in relation to the carriage or line scale is determined from this scale on the paper table. Elsie Smith, Remington, Underwood, and Woodstock machines have similar scales. The paper tables on the Electromatic and Burroughs machines do not have line scales. Therefore, the position of the paper guide is determined by inspection. The paper rests against the paper table and the paper guide as it is fed into the machine. The paper bale holds the paper close to the platen. This prevents paper drumming, keeps the paper from flapping, and makes your type impression sharp and even. These rubber rolls should divide your sheet in even thirds. Otherwise, this may happen if you turn your paper back. The paper feed rolls are out of sight under the platen. These rolls and the platen feed paper into the machine and hold the paper in position. To insert paper rapidly, arrange it so it can be handled easily. Pick up the sheets with your left hand, fingers above, and your thumb below, near the middle of the left edge of the sheet. 
place the sheets on the paper table with the left edge against the paper guide and the top edge firmly touching the feed roll. With your right hand, give the flattened knob a rapid twirl and turn the sheets to the writing line. As you let go of the flattened knob, bring your right hand forward and with your right thumb, move the paper bale in place so that the paper is held firmly under the paper bale. You can do this in five counts. One, two, three, four, five. Now watch the counts and motions blend into one continuous action. Let's try it on a machine with a different kind of paper bale. When you use a carbon pack, be sure to use smooth carbon and insert the pack squarely in the machine. If you don't, this may happen. This means wasted paper and lost time. Improper feeding also means crooked paper. When this happens, use the paper release lever, which releases the pressure on the feed rolls and permits the paper to be adjusted. Line up your paper with the paper guide. Then turn the paper down and check it with the alignment scale. The paper release lever is always back of and inside the platen knob and projects upward like this. The electromatic, however, has the release lever at the left. Be sure to use the paper release lever when you take out letters or copy. This is not advisable. It bothers other people, wears the line space ratchet and gears, causes carbon paper smears, and rubs the paper sizing into the platen, making it glossy and causing paper slippage later. The carriage can be moved to the right or left by holding the platen knob with your fingers and pressing the carriage release lever with your thumb. Machines have two carriage release levers, one at the right and one at the left. When you understand the basic technique, the next most important thing is intelligent and perfect.